we are on the uh, shared memory coding example now. Uh, I have given you the general principle. Uh, so as far as the coding goes, let's share the screen. Uh, so here, uh, I will implement this producer-consumer problem. It is a general problem. Basically, what this does is there is a buffer. The shared memory is this buffer. And producer puts something here and uh, like send uh, or write is the more correct word. word uh, and consumer reads stuff here. And when you read stuff, it is like removed. Uh, so to implement this, uh, we have this uh, again in the class website. I have this sh shared memory get application. So this is the producer code, okay? Uh, and this is the producer code, and this is the the second one is the consumer code. So le let's begin with the producer code. What producer does is the following. So I use the system API, sys, and from here I import, include the related stuff. The size of the shared memory, I will hold 1024 items. And in, in my case, each character is an item, okay? So uh, shared memory is a pointer to a, a character, and I will add uh, at most 1000. 24 of them uh, to the location. So here is the key, okay? One, two, three, four. So this value must be known by the consumer as well, okay? Uh, so this is rather a simple value. Inside the SHM get function, uh, this key will be converted into a unique and weird and long uh, uh, key, uh, unique ID for the operating system to know. But to the outside, you just believe that one, two, three, four is your ID, and you will get this many amount of space in that ID, and you will create it. Uh, and this is the writing permissions, writing, reading, and executing permissions. In general, we just put uh, this value here. So if there is an error, then this function returns minus one, like if there is no space, so you are on the edge of your system or something. But now I am here. I attach to this ID, be careful, this is the ID returned by sh shame get using my key. I attach to that ID uh, and I declare that I cast it to the type that I want. So in this case, I will deal with characters. So what I do here is uh, starting from character A until character Z, I will go one by one. So I add to the location. So this is dereferencing if you recall your C days. Uh, basically, this is uh, you are dereferencing the location and you put A here and then you advance this uh, pointer to the next one. Basically, you go to the next item. Uh, and you put B here, etc. So in this scenario, what happened is uh, inside the uh, SHM, you have inserted all these numbers from A to Z, all these characters, and then I just get into a while loop, uh, an infinite loop, currently infinite, but it will be resolved whenever uh, I read uh, a character uh, so again, dereferencing, and this is a special character. So currently, don't worry about it. So once the shared memory is filled, let's do the client action. Okay. So notice that I need to use the same key value, which will return me the same shame ID. And now, what is happening is I am attacking to the same ID. Uh, I read the first character uh, because initially this is pointing to the beginning of that block. If it is not Z, like it is not the last character, initially it will be A. I print A and I advance it. <coughs> then I print B, etc. And uh, so, for instance, what can happen here? 
during my producer production, so when I was at letter T, for instance, uh, the scheduler may move this process outside the uh, kick this process outside the CPU. Okay, so I I have put all the letters A B C D until T. Okay, and when I am at T, I just leave it, uh, leave the process. So then control comes to uh, the reader consumer. So it reads A B C blah blah, and currently the last character is S. After S, T comes, right? So S is red. Uh, and here, when I read stuff, it is, uh, th there is nothing to read. So uh, you wait. And when it is filled again, you continue reading. And when you read the special character Z, you quit. And here I alert the producer, like I am writing something. So. So far, this consumer was reading stuff using this dereferencing, but now I will also write stuff, and I will write this character, and then I detach because I am over. And now, when producer reads that character, it also escapes from this block. It also detaches. Okay, so this is the shared memory application. Uh, there may be a different way. So in this example, basically. I show you in my shared memory of size 10, instead of keeping characters, I will keep uh, something as a struct of type item. Okay, so there may be other members here, uh, but the logic is the same. In the uh, producer code, if the next pointer, so assume that this is your configuration, black means empty, others are occupied, so in this configuration, we assume that this is full. Okay, so I don't expect everything to be gray. Only one black means full. So in plus one is equal to buffer size. Uh, sorry, in plus one mod buffer size because I need to take mod because when in is here, in plus one needs to point to zero, etc. So if in plus one is out, like here, it means that buffer is full. So do nothing, just wait. Okay, just wait, uh, an empty statement. So eventually the scheduler will run the consumer, which is here. And in the consumer, I just put uh, the read the value from out uh, index and I increase out. So now, out has increased. So when producer comes back here, this equality fails because out has been updated. So I can now put a new item and increase the in. Okay, so this is the uh, idea here. Uh, Hojam, there's just one question. In your producer code from your side, uh, yes. you got some memory, some shared memory from, I think from uh, SHM get. Right. Yes, okay. yes. Uh -huh. But you never specified how much memory you need. So I just I assumed it. Uh, so 1000. Oh, okay. The, the oh, second, okay, okay. second okay. parameter is, uh, yeah, I specified. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Kernel operating system code uses this, and in the background, it does its malloc, etc., and it mm -hmm. handles that. <clears throat> okay, yeah. So, okay, enough with the shared memory. Uh, as I mentioned, it is fast, no system calls, but synchronization is an issue, etc. You can also do POSIX API, but instead of shared memory get, you can use MMAP. But uh, again, uh, one example API is enough. For the message passing, uh, I will uh, do the same producer consumer application using this paradigm. Uh, so, there can be message queues, uh, mailbox example I have shown here is going to hold stuff. So the, someone needs to mute. Okay. Uh, and there is also a message queue versus pipe. We will get into pipes later. Message queue is bi-directional, meaning that you can 
have two directions like uh, one to the from process one to two and other direction from two to one in pipes it is unidirectional uh, by default uh, and yeah so le let's put this in action in message queue by the way pipes are the ones that we will focus on that's why this i will just be very fast on this example basically what this does is uh, it is uh, going to uh, create uh, so this is the system call message sent okay using to that to that queue to that mailbox it sends stuff and this consumer just can okay, you zoom in uh, zoom in yeah so uh, Kim uh, yeah so here in the message queue uh, we get the basically it's a similar message get like this is the system call and then you use your message sent stuff and in the consumer you will use the same key uh, as the producer and use message receive so this is that's why we don't need to spend more time on this issue uh, let's come to the uh, pipe stuff okay which is a different way to uh, perform inter-process communication so in this case uh, there is a there is going to be a pipe like a channel between two processes uh, so there is a right end to the pipe where you write stuff here so this is like a buffer and there is a read end so uh, the right end uh, so this is basically a descriptor think of it like this it has two values uh, it's an array of size two the zero the first entry is for the reading and the second entry is for the writing okay this is designed that way uh, it has a fixed size meaning that if you write stuff up to 10k without reading anything out it will fill up you don't proceed and it has this first in first out behavior anything can be written to the pipe and re read from the other end in the order they came in so here is the motivational example to you i have three processes here okay ls sort and grep so output of ls so by the way this is a special notation in uh, uh, in unix shell terminal this is this character it will send the output of this uh, process to this pro process okay so normally when you do ls so let me clear stuff when you do ls the output is written to the terminal okay to the uh, yes like printf uh, to the std out okay so uh, to the this stream however when you do uh, ls and pipe uh, so, or i don't know this character is like pipe uh, and you send the output of this to this process or now it will uh, sort will receive this output as its input and it will do its sorting and it will uh, print it uh, so in this case i go even further the sorted results within those files i will grab uh, grab is like find uh, i i will report the strings that have this substring in it so in this case these are because of the sq thing so if you look here ls will do the writing sort will do the reading and writing to another pipe which is the communicator between sort and grep and so on uh, so i will show you this uh, in action okay so then it will be even more clear so let me just show you my pipe example here okay so initially let's go over this thing okay so we have a pipe so i have two processes by the way right so i will create uh, a process a child process and i also have the parent process so initially let's just focus on this example okay later i will do the other piping 
So here what I do is, uh, the, uh, so I just have two access points, uh, zero accesses to the right end and one to the read end. Uh, so this will be the buffer, the content that I will write to the pipe. Okay, so this is the system call, which will uh, give the uh, information to your descriptor, file descriptor. So currently just tell it it's the descriptor that is describing your pipe. So uh, you can uh, print this information, like uh, your writing end is, so maybe I should also go through the code. So let's copy paste this here, okay? Uh, let's compile this real quick. GCC, I think we did before. Uh, so currently, uh, what I, it will do is uh, the writing end is at index one and the reading at end is at index zero. Okay, uh, so don't even bother with this part now. Let's just talk about that descriptor values now. So here, if you Uh, do the execution, where is that? Okay, so writing end is in the value four and reading is three. So the zero, one, two, they are reserved, okay? They are reserved for STD in, STD out, and STD error streams, okay? So it will begin after three. That's why I put this example here. So the values don't really matter actually, but know that it will be after three, two. Uh, okay, so now what else? In this case, uh, the client process, it writes, be careful, this is the right end. R this content of size nine, this is uh, a system call, so you need to give all details. Uh, and it writes, okay, then it is its task. Uh, parent will read from that the same pipe designated by the same descriptor. So assume that the operating system first given the permission of execution to this process. So it goes to read, but, but it blocks because the pipe content is uh, nothing. Nothing in, is in the pipe now, it blocks. So later, when the execution comes to the, this process, it will print hider, put hider into the par, uh, pipe using the right end and then when the turn comes here, it will escape from here by reading the content to buff. And then I add a, a null terminator uh, and then I print it and maybe flush it. So this is the idea of piping at the very simplest and stupid example. Now let's do a better example where I will do this action. Okay, so I will basically, if let's enable this thing. So I will, uh, implement so let's open this so I want to uh, count the number of files in my folder okay so currently I have one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten items in my folder so ls is printing it but I want ls to give this output to word count Okay, so what is word count, by the way? Man, word count, if you do it, it is it displays the number of lines and number of words and bytes in each, in the standard input. So there is no file in my case. Okay, so in the standard input, I have 10 lines, right? So let's go there now. Uh, so ls, now give this, output not to do std out normally ls uses std out right but instead of this stream i will use this uh, special flag so it will give this info to the word count and it will say that 10 okay number of uh, lines so which is correct right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and 27 is the number of words so if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20. 3, 24, 25, 26, yes, and 27, be careful, there is a space here. Yeah, so this is the idea uh, of piping. Two processes are communicating, so I can know the number of files in my folder. So let's implement this, okay? It is very easy to implement. So in the after all shell, this process is a uh, piece of code, and within that, they implement this part, okay? So what is this doing? This shell process, uh, uh, in this case, ls, uh, so, okay, this is the parent process, shell process. It comes here, but it will execute ls. So this parent will be the ls process now. But before that, I need to set up the environment. So what will I do is the following. I close the regular std out. Okay, so regularly ls prints to the std out. But I close it. And now I duplicate it using this call using FTS1, one for the reading. So now FTS, I make FTS same as STD out in that sense. But usually, instead of using these two lines, uh, we use DOP2. So, uh, it is easier to code, more readable. Same idea. The second parameter is replaced by the first parameter, okay? Know it like this, and then don't uh, and the unused pipe, which is the read end, so ls doesn't read anything. Just close it, okay? Don't forget to close the unused site. Then with that environment, I will execute ls. So ls will now give the output to the pipe, okay? So uh, let's also get some visualization here, like some piece of paper. Uh, here if we uh, what is happening is the following I, the ls uh, give me the pen markup so ls process so there is this pipe around and inside of it it will print the content of the ls output okay so normally ls process prints to the std out okay but i cancel it this is an x instead it will print into this pipe okay so this is done now the other process is my client process but the client process will be replaced by the wc wc is normally it reads stuff from input uh, std out std in sorry input so i replace it with the input read end of the same pipe be careful fts is the established pipe here so i close the other end now uh, i can now what it does is i have this wc process which regularly read from std in but i cancel it like i replace it uh, and it will now read from here and once it reads it, WC by default it uh, has it uses STD out, and I don't touch it because I don't touch the right endpoint of that process. So it will just print the result to uh, STD out. So it has become 11 years because of the file. Uh, so let's run this and believe that it works. So GCC again compile stuff, and now when I run this. Yeah, I see number 11, which is uh, what I want. Before that, I have some prints here. Uh, okay, so this is the idea of a pipe, uh, how I communicate between processes. Uh, and by the way, as I mentioned, first three uh, channels are reserved for STD in, STD out, and STD uh, error, respectively. Basically, uh, so what is this? Uh, this is the first stream from keyboard to program, second stream from program to display, and third stream is from program to display, but in the form of an error. 
uh, okay, so we have seen this in action. Uh, actually, I have also a visualization here. Uh, uh, basically, I have implemented the terminals uh, support, pipe support in C, just as you have seen, uh, and using the exec idea. Uh, so yeah, we discussed this. Uh, now I will do an even better and a slightly more complicated example, but it will make things perfectly clear. Uh, so I will establish two pipes now, okay? So, because I want to uh, do this, for instance, echo, uh, so what is three plus four? It is nothing obviously, but if you echo that, it will print three, whatever you write here, right? Echo is like that. But instead of there, I will put this string into a pipe from where BC will read stuff, okay, which is a calculator, and it will this is the input three plus four of a calculator, so it will print seven. Okay, so how to design this architecture? So here is one way I have done. So let's also go visual here uh, with a bigger picture, but again some. Uh, yes, I can communicate with this Mac uh, image processing stuff so maybe i should get a new environment so this is a stupid way to draw stuff but okay uh okay this is my pen hopefully yes it is working so what i will do is the following what is happening here i will create two pipes okay so be careful here because again this relates to your homework programming assignment uh so i pit i so i fork so I have two processes now, child and parent. But this code will be replaced by the uh, by the BC code at some point. But here I don't need it. Basically, the idea is I have something to do. I am a child, but I am lazy. I will make the other parent process to do the calculation for me. Okay. So this is the idea of this. Uh, the scenario of this uh, episode. So, what is the following? I have uh, the pipe. I have two pipes, okay? Pipe one and pipe two. So, this is pipe two. This is pipe one. Uh, FDS two and FDS one, okay? So, what I. So, let's set up the environment. Close the STDR, so whenever I do a print to STDR, which I do like this, because you can't just do printf, STDR, uh, you need to go over this procedure. So I close STDR, uh, and I will write stuff to the second pipe. So let's write it. Okay, so it will be written. And I close the unread, unused part. Okay, so now... I print 3 plus 4 to the STDR. However, STDR, and I'll also flush it to ensure that it prints. Uh, now it is replaced by this pipe. So that 3 plus 4 is indeed written here. Okay. So, so far that's it. Uh, let's undo this and begin the execution from the parent side. Let, let's assume that scheduler has given permission here so it will parent will read from pipe 2 okay uh, for some reason so parent will read from pipe 2 uh, so the read and it will read from pipe 2 uh, okay uh, and it will also write to uh, pipe one. So what is parent? It will be this BC process. Okay, so this is the BC process. It's a process because it will be replaced. Normally, BC process reads from STD in, but it will now read from uh, this pipe. Okay, but since this pipe is empty, it will block basically. It will wait. 
once this pipe is filled with 3 plus 4 uh, at some point, now BC reads it and processes it, and then it prints something to the outside with printf. However, I am preventing it. I am saying that your std out is replaced with the right end of the first pipe. So instead of printing to terminal, you will print to the right end of this pipe. So basically, it will produce seven. Seven will be printed here. Okay. Uh, and so then what is also going to happen? This is uh, the uh, child process. It is normally it uh, whenever it executes a statement like this. So this is like scanf. Go to the std in. So you should know this function. You can also use scanf here. But I replace it. I say that instead of standard input, you get the input from your pipe. Read it from the first pipe's read end. Okay. So in other words, it will read it from here. So where is the pen? Uh, it will read from here, but I lost the. Uh, yes. Uh, Again, another weird stuff is happening. So I, why did I lose the pen? Uh, okay, it, it came now, whatever. So here, uh, you will read it from your, if it is empty, you will just block, but currently it is not empty. So you will read the seven uh, and put the result into your buff, which comes from pipe, not from STD in. And then you print it. Lazy child got the result from parent, which is seven. So you print seven to the screen. Okay. So this is the uh, architecture of these two pipes, uh, how they communicate to handle to handle some task. So maybe uh, I, I can put this uh, in action and also see that it works. So if I copy paste this here. Uh, and I compile this program, and it will basically lazy child will get the result from the parent seven. Uh, yeah, so this is how the pipe two pipes are working uh, between two processes. One process is the child process of the original code, and second process is the calculator process. Uh, it is replaced. It has replaced the parent of the original code. Uh, yes, so this uh, completes the pipe business, uh, actually this uh, pipe idea, so you should practice it, maybe start with the first single pipe uh, example first, this is more easy, and then try more pipes between two processes, etc. There is on, also one little uh, issue, which is signal. It is another way to communicate between processes. It is a very lightweight. It is uh, basically uh, some light notification of an event or an exception. So what happens is some noise is coming again. In the signal business, uh, the uh, Basically, when a signal is sent, operating system interrupts processes normal execution flow. Uh, so you can overwrite the behavior, uh, the, your signal handler, or you can use the default action. So for instance, control C is a signal to terminate a process, right? So now we will see how to implement that kind of stuff. So a signal is sent from the kernel and sometimes it is sent by the kernel, like you do a divide by zero or uh, index, negative index uh, access, uh, that kind of weird thing. Then kernel sends it directly. But sometimes other processes 
another process requests kernel to send you a signal okay so eventually kernel sends it but another request uh, another process may trigger it so kernel sends a signal for one of the following reasons kernel has detected a weird event such as divide by zero or an event like t your child has terminated okay uh, actually this is done right when the child is terminated uh, wait function in the parent should release right or another way is uh, another process uses kill system call whose name sucks by the way so this is actually sent you are sending a signal but for some reason uh, they call it kill because it is used to kill processes as well but in general this is sending uh, a system call to explicit the request to send a signal to the destination process okay so uh, uh, how should i demonstrate this real quick for instance what are my processes here top i have this kind of process around uh, and when i uh, so i want to kill but first let's uh open a new process maybe uh that we can detect like safari or something uh, um, so here we have safari with the id of what uh, uh id of Mm, we can't see that so i don't want to terminate other stuff so maybe i, I should restart this terminal okay so this is the terminal uh, where we have some processes like safari with some uh, content here like youtube uh, and what we do here is uh, we top see the mm, yeah interesting i don't see safari here i don't know why because is it uh it kept popping up and then going away before but it was there uh, for sure uh, Okay. Anyway, so I want to send a signal to some uh, function. I will do it over code, but I also want to do it through this thing. So, for instance, there are these uh, proc one, which has uh, not terminated properly. I, I guess I forgot to do something there. So, for instance, thirty one eight seven five. So you can send to that uh, process the a signal like some signal value i forgot uh, and then the process id which was 31875 i guess if i recall correctly so this 99 is not a valid id so you can send here a, a process id like uh, kill is nine okay or two is terminate so let's send nine so this will kill that third one, 85. So you, you will not see this anymore here. So these are other procs. Uh, let's also do a 31870 something. So by default, by the way, and that's why they call it uh, kill. By default, if you don't send any signal in particular, then you it sends nine, okay? And it kills that, etc. So but there are better uses of this so this is also a good use by the way because uh, for instance you have a program that is uh, in infinite loop so let's also do that here so i have this program here which, which starts with an infinite loop for no reason uh, and when i start uh, when I start this program, uh, and I, I want to start this in the background, otherwise I don't have access to the... 
so let's by the way call this a different thing because proc one is confusing let's call this proc two uh, and let's run proc two here uh, i should have run proc two so and run this in the background okay so without running this in the background if i hit enter so now this is running in the foreground so now i will send this a signal of terminate which is control c right so this is kind of shell is a process and i want this process which is this terminal see this is the terminal process it, i want it to send a signal uh, like kill signal to the uh, active front process so i will do it with control c okay so it just uh, got the signal and kill signal you cannot overwrite okay you cannot override it it will definitely terminate but you can overwrite other signals so uh, uh, and you can act accordingly so we will demonstrate them one by one later uh, but let me also run this proc in the background okay so it has this id so if i stop it i see proc to running willy nilly in the background with 35716 so now there is no way for me to stop it but i know its id <clears throat> So I can send the die signal to that process uh, and it will just uh, be killed. Now let's do more than killing. Uh, so a destination receives a signal when it is forced by the kernel. In So you can ignore the signal, uh, let the default take place, or you can... Uh, terminate the process with some debugging information or you can get the signal and do some user level action predefined action so here is uh, one example process one sends six stop to process two like it it is telling it to hold on to pon continue process two has to receive a six continue uh, signal for instance uh, so now let's understand this in code uh, for instance okay this seek int uh, is the interrupt signal it is sent uh, to a process when user hits control c but obviously you need to be uh, that process so the shell need to be active and that process needs to be in the background otherwise if you do control c it will do copy so you know that uh, now i will change the behavior of this thing okay with this code here so if i go to my coding area where i have this signal action code so let me just copy paste this code to my bigger environment so this is now proc one so here see what i will do i will <coughs> define is user level signal handler okay which is a member of this sig action uh, struct which is coming with this include uh, basically so this is in general we just use this flag because signal may arrive during the execution of a system call so when you uh, dealt deal with the signal you restart that system call because system calls can be important etc so in general we just use restart and this is just a masking again we just uh, get all the signals sometimes you can filter some signals they don't even arrive below now i am binding term uh, terminate signal to the handler uh, and if you by the way sig action is a replacement for this uh, old API called Signal, so we don't use this. This is old, so you can you could have also used that one, but still go with SIG action. I will also handle the interrupt signal, which is the Control C, uh, and I will also handle uh, floating point exception. So when you divide something by zero, there will be a signal to be sent to this process from the kernel because kernel. Uh, doesn't know how to uh, actually CPU doesn't know how to divide it by zero it will tell it to kernel and kernel tell it to you by sending this signal 
Uh, and there is also segmentation violation signal if you try to address something that is not malloced before, or, or if you try to uh, access a negative index or something like negative 10. So we will see them now. So uh, in my program, uh, I will just print numbers to the screen one by one, okay, for no reason, and I will sleep one second. But during that, I will, for instance, the famous control C. If that signal comes to me from the terminal application because of the control C, then I will handle it. When interrupt comes, I just print a job to the screen. So let me first uh, do that, like create my proc to clear the environment. Uh, let this run. Segmentation, by the way, there was another signal happening because uh, I am accessing a memory that is not allocated before, right? There is no malloc here uh, yet. So that's why this will produce a segmentation V. And when I see seg V, I handle it, like print something, which is which has a typo, but okay, you still print it, uh, seg by person or something. So it will uh, print it because that signal comes to you from the operating system. Uh, not, let's not do that, okay? Let's not create a segmentation mistake. Uh, let's also not create a divide by zero because I'm dividing by one here, but let's create the uh, interrupt signal. The Yeah, so let me run this program. Zero, one, two. Now I will hit Control C, and it says, ah, it hurts, right? This is the job of today. Like, it doesn't normally, the default behavior is termination, right? This program should have terminated. But I have now overwritten that behavior uh, with uh, uh, this action, which is basically printing something to the screen. Uh, so this is a way, this process, the bash or terminal is communicating with me by sending a terminal signal, terminate signal, but I don't really care. I just handle it myself, like by printing. It hurt it, but I still live. It didn't kill me, etc. That's kind of philosophy is happening. Uh, but if you don't do that handler, okay, now you will, if you overwrite the default sigint, then you overwrite it with that clock. But if you don't overwrite it, now let's do it. There is no overwritten. So now the default behavior is what? When you get a sig term, terminal signal, a terminate signal, you just terminate. It quits, as you can see. Also, let's also do this. If you divide by zero, for instance, for at some point in your code, uh, Compile and divide by zero because I am overriding that behavior. Okay, so signals are nice and lightweight ways to call, uh, to talk between, uh, to communicate uh, across processes. Uh, so I have covered these issues actually. Sick kill terminates the process. Yeah, uh, we did this. So it is nine. You can also write nine, or you can just provide nothing, then uh, the, the term terminal is sent by default, uh, which terminates the program. But you can overwrite this behavior, as we have seen. But you cannot overwrite sick kill. Uh, yeah, so we have covered these issues. Uh, kill is one way to send signals to a process. We have seen it. Uh, Kill can be used from shell, like I have uh, used here, like killed something, and, or you can kill other signals, send other signals, but you can also send that signal from one process to another using C code. What you have to do is call the kill system call with the uh, target process 
and the type of the signal. And similarly, you can send the signal to yourself by calling the raise function, which is not uh, very common, but still it is uh, enabled. So here is uh, a nice application you, you can do with these signals. And in your assignment, you will also use some signaling. Uh, so there are these two signals that are reserved. That have no predefined action. Okay, so you have to uh, define something for them if you are going to use them. So, for instance, you have a CD player process, okay, that is that responds to, and by respond I mean it has this handler and it responds to what SIG user one. So, uh, it responds to this process like SIG user one. Uh, you, how it responds? So instead of printing stupid things to the screen, you, you can advance to the next track, okay? So now what happens is, uh, assume that CD player has the process ID of 7482, you can send uh, this signal to that process and then whenever you receive it, you go to the next track, next song, okay? So this is a, uh, you don't have to create types or uh, shared memory because all you need is a little uh, information like uh, skip track, okay? So now signal is very useful. Uh, and with that, we stop today's class.